This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can add some simple shading to your vector illustrations using Inkscape. This is a nice little touch you can add to your designs to make them pop a little more. And if you don't have an example design to try this out with, then I'll have a download link in the description of the video if you want to practice on this example design that I'm using here. But before we get started, if you'd like to learn more about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So getting started here in Inkscape, as you can see, I have the software open. The first thing we want to do is just make sure we have our snapping enabled. Up here, the top icon in the very top left that says Ena uh, Enable Snapping, make sure that's turned on. And we want to come over here to where it says Snap to Cusp Nodes, make sure that's enabled, and then Snap to Smooth Nodes as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import this example design. I have it downloaded here in this folder. I'm just going to click and drag this onto the canvas like that. I'm going to click OK to leave the default settings as they are. And there's this example shark design that I'm going to be working with. Now, let me come up here to where it says View. Make sure you have Custom selected. Go to Zoom. Zoom in at 1 to 1. And now I'm just going to hold Control and Shift with the Select tool here. Hold Control and Shift and grab one of these arrows and scale this down. Now for this tutorial, you don't have to necessarily follow this step. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click this and go to Duplicate. And I'm going to apply this to a duplicate copy over here. I'm going to leave this one over here, the original, so that I can show you the difference between the finished design and how it was previously, just to show you how well it makes the design look. So I have this design over here. What I want to do now is just ungroup this. I'm going to come up here to where it says ungroup, ungroup selected objects, click on that. You may want to click on that just a few times just to make sure that there's not several layers of groupings there. And now we can click off and deselect everything. What I'm looking at here is I'm just going to imagine a light source being over here on the canvas right here, shining light going this way. So like on this side of the design, the right side will be like a glow or like a highlight effect. And over here will be a shading or a shadow effect. So let me zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And if you want to move the page around at any point, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually draw a shaded, a shaded area right here. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is right here. With the snapping enabled as it is there, I'm just going to snap to this cusp node right there. Click, and then come down here and click down here into this blue area. And then I'm going to bring the line going through this blue area here back to the starting point. Oops. Back to the starting point. Like that. Make sure you're going through the dark blue area the whole time. And now I want to open up the fill and stroke menu, which is over here. Fill and stroke. Or you could press Control, Shift, and F on the keyboard. And for the fill color, I want to make this the same shade of blue that this light shade of blue is here, only slightly darker. So to do this, I'm actually going to use the dropper tool first. I'm going to come over here to where it says pick colors from an image, or you can press D on the keyboard. And just go ahead and grab a, uh, a sample selection from that there. And where it says fill in the fill tab, I'm looking for HSL. And in the L row, I'm going to take this and bring this to the left a little bit, just to make that a little darker. And I'm actually going to change the shade of that blue a little bit. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this H row and just slide this to the right a little bit, just to make that pop out a little more. And I want to get rid of that black outline. So I'm going to hold shift and click this red X in the bottom left corner. And now what I want to do is grab the select tool and I want to lower this beneath these blue objects. So I'm going to come up here to where it says lower selection one step, click that once, again, again and again until it goes beneath these objects over here. Now instead of using this button, what I like to do is use the keyboard shortcut, which is page down. So I'm just going to press page down until it goes beneath everything like that. Or maybe not that far. Okay, perfect, right there. Once you've done that, just take your, your Edit Paths by Nodes tool and take this line and just manually click and drag it in so that it follows a similar contour to this blue, this dark blue line right here. And if you go to the Select tool and you zoom back out, you'll notice you've, we've added a little bit of shading right there. Now I'm going to take this and make this a little lighter. I don't want it quite that dark. That looks a little better. And I'm just going to go through and do the same thing right here. I'm going to add another shape by the fin right here. Let me grab the uh, Bezier pen. I'm going to start right here, bring the line right here, then over here, and then through the blue areas, the dark blue, the dark blue areas until it's back to the starting point like that. Fill it in with this shade right here. So I'm going to grab the dropper, fill that in. Get rid of the black outline by shift clicking the X. Back to the select tool. And again, I'm using page down until it goes beneath those dark blue areas. And now I'm going to grab 
the edit paths by nodes tool and then just adjust this so that these lines follow the contour of these lines over here. And that right there is what I'm looking for. Let me zoom out a little bit. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to draw another one right here. I'm going to be, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts now and work a little bit faster. So I'm going to grab the Bezier pen again over here, B on the keyboard to grab that. I'm going to start right here at this corner, bring the line up here like that, and then through the dark blue area, back to the starting point, press D on the keyboard to grab the dropper, make that the same color, get rid of the outline by shift clicking the red X. And now I'm going to grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool by pressing N on the keyboard. And then I'll just take this and drag this in. You know what? Let me go back to the Select tool and lower this down. I'm going to press Page down on the keyboard a few times. There we go. And now I can go back to the Nodes tool. And I can click on this node right here, the corner node. And then I can get these little handles that'll make it easier for me to adjust. So I want to adjust these handles so that this shadow is following the contour of the shoulder here, or the dark blue border. That's looking pretty good right there, as you can see. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here, only I'm going to make this shadow follow this, this side right here. So let me grab the Bezier pen again. Same steps as before. I'm going to end this one right about here. I'm not going to take this all the way to the end right here. I'll put it right about here, back through the starting point, through the dark blue areas. There we go. Make it the same color. Get rid of the outline. Lower it down with page down and then back to the nodes tool and we can adjust this further and make it fit, make it a little more fluid. Now you may want to temporarily disable snapping while you're doing this. To do that, you can just come up here and click on that because there's sometimes you're going to want to adjust these handles and the snapping gets in the way. So you can temporarily turn that off if you want to adjust these handles like I'm doing here. And then if you want to turn it back on, you could just press, you could just click this button. Or what I like to do is use the keyboard shortcut, which is shift and five. And there we go. Now it's enabled again. So looking at this illustration here, we're going to want to apply this shadow effect. Maybe, maybe over here where the thumb is. And then after that, we'll have the shadows applied to the left side of the design. And then we're going to work on adding highlights to the right side of the design. So let me just go through and finish up the shadows really quick. Okay, so I've gone through and I've added some shadows to the left side of the de design. Now I'm gonna add some highlights to the right side of the design. And I'm gonna start up here with uh, the shark's head up here. Because as, as we're imagining, this light source is coming over here from the right and shining this way. So let me grab the Bezier pen again. Let me turn snapping back on and I want to snap to this corner. I'm going to create the, the highlight right here going along the top of the head here. Snap it back to this starting point over here. Bring it through the border, the dark blue border. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And back to the starting point. And for this one, I'm going to use a lighter shade instead of a darker shade. So let me grab the dropper, make this the same shade of blue, only I'm going to make this one a little lighter like that. Let's get rid of the outline or the stroke. Go back to the select tool, page down a few times to lower it beneath the eye and beneath the dark blue area. And now we can grab the edit paths by nodes tool. I'm going to turn off snapping for this part because I know for a fact that it's going to get in the way. Take this node down here, adjust this. That's looking pretty good. I just want to get this out of the way of the eye right here. So I'm going to double click. I'm actually going to double click right here to add a new node and then just bring that up like that. That didn't come out quite as well as I'd like. So let me undo that. To undo, I'm just going to hit Control Z a couple of times. And let me raise this back to the top. I want to add this node right here. There we go. And now I can go ahead and lower this down. That's what I'm looking for right there. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to add another highlight going right here. Now, since this area is white, I'm just going to use a more vibrant shade of light blue for this highlight. Although it's technically, technically if this were like gray, you would use white right here. But since this is already white, I'm just going to use a different, like a more vibrant blue like this. So let me grab the Bezier pen again. I'm going to start over here. I'm actually going to start up here. Let me turn snapping back on. I'm going to start at this corner and I'm going to come through here like this. Let me turn off snapping after I've connected to that point. There we go. 
back through this area right here. And I want to make this probably the same shade of this, maybe a little lighter. So let me grab the dropper. There we go. Get rid of the outline. Let's lower this down. There we go. Grab the nodes tool and then just make this follow the contour of that. I actually got to lower that down some more that's still sticking out. There we go. And I want to make that a little lighter. That's a little too dark for a little too dark for it to be a highlight like that. That looks pretty good right there. So now I'm going to create another one going through the teeth right here. Let me grab the Bezier pen. Right through there and then right through here like this. Back to the starting point, make this the same color with the dropper tool, get rid of the stroke and then lower it down like that. And as you can see, it's, it's really coming to life here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more highlights through here, maybe right here on the right side of the shoulder and then over here at the top of the knuckles over here and maybe right there as well. I'll have to see how it looks. So let me go through and do that real quick. Okay, so as you can see, I finished up adding my highlights to the right side and the top side of the areas of the design here. And whether or not this is actually correct, like this is how the light would actually interact with a subject like this, I don't know, probably not, but it still looks good enough for it to be effective and to make the design pop a little more. And let me zoom back out here to show you what I mean. I'm going to take this original design and I'm going to put it right next to it. And as you can see, there is a clear difference there. This design just seems more alive. It seems to pop a little more. It just looks like a, like a higher quality illustration, just with some simple shading and highlights drawn with the Bezier pen like that. So that is how you can go about adding some highlights and shadows and, and shading features to your simple illustrations using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end the video, I'd just like to let you know that you can watch all future tutorials without ads and before I upload them to YouTube at logosbynick.com. Just click the red bell at the bottom of the page to get notifications and every time a new tutorial is posted, you'll get to watch it before it gets uploaded to YouTube and without any advertisements. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and as always, thanks for watching.